Okay, so Jelly Solutions actually replied. So after I made my latest high-end thermal paste comparison video, which featured the brand new Cryonaut Extreme from Thermal Grizzly, the standard Cryonaut, the Kimping Cooling KPX, as well as the GC Extreme from Jelly Solutions. Uh, I think the folks over at Jelly Solutions uh, uh, found out my video and they saw how bad performance I had with the 10 gram size jar of GC Extreme and they actually uh, uh, contacted me before I managed to send them an email about this issue. So they sent me an email and they asked that would I be interested to do a retest with the GC Extreme if they sent me a bunch of their most latest G63 thermal paste so that we could be sure that the stuff I will be testing uh, is brand new and it hasn't been sitting in some warehouse for ages. So of course I replied yes and I got this package like a little bit over a week ago that contains some of the most latest G63 and a few other things as well. So I think we could go through them quickly right now and then do the test afterwards. So the package contains five bags of brand new GC Extreme and we can quickly note from the get-go that the packaging has changed completely and I think it's a very good thing. I never really liked the old blister package they had been using with the 3.5 gram size tubes. It's very hard to open, you need like scissors to open it and I really don't like it at all. The simple bag design is much much better. So, uh, And even the uh, tube itself has changed a bit uh, the way it looks, but I think the actual thermal paste should be still the same. At least when I looked online uh, on Jelly Solutions website, the thermal paste still has the same performance figures as before. So same thermal conductivity rating, so 8.5 watts per meter Kelvin, and the viscosity rating was still the same. When we look at the bag, we cannot find any of those values mentioned on the packaging, we only have this uh, very brief uh, performance comparison graph over here at the back side of the packaging where GC Extreme is obviously leading, but overall it's pretty much the same, I think. Based on this preview, it seems they have swapped the separate plastic applicator completely to this uh, like tip applicator, which Thermal Grizzly has been using for ages. Uh, with the cryonaut tubes. I think that is a small minus, at least me. Or I personally, I have really liked the separate uh, plastic applicators like this one over here. It's much better for spreading the thermal paste than those tip applicators, but that is just my personal preference. I am sure you can, you can easily get along with something like this as well. So five bags of GC Extreme, 3.5 grams each and it seems so that they have even gone rid they have even got rid of the 10 gram size jar option completely so when i looked online on their website i could not find this 10 gram size jar anymore there's only three different tube size options so one gram size tube 3.5 gram size tube and a 10 gram size tube of gc extreme and i think that is a good move Thermal pastes really seem to last longer when they are stored in tubes rather than in jars. So even Kimpin Cooling or Kimpin got uh, rid of those uh, old jars uh, he initially used with the KPX thermal paste and now he's only selling the thermal paste in tubes. So uh, I already mentioned that in the high-end thermal paste comparison video. So I think this move is very very good. So it seems so that only Thermal Grizzly is still using these jars, at least with the Cryonaut Extreme, and I think it's a bad move. Because if the Cryonaut Extreme goes bad over time due to being stored in a jar, that's a very bad thing when considering the high cost of the thermal paste. So, that, so just saying, I'm sure you get the idea. And with those uh, thermal paste tubes, I got six uh, pieces of their brand new GP Ultimate Thermal Pad three of which are half a millimeter thick thermal pads and three are one millimeter thick thermal pads. These are a little bit harder to compare because I have never compared thermal pads. A very good, a very good example where you would need like separate thermal pads is uh, if you install let's say custom, uh, custom heat sinks 
on memory sticks. So I have one example over here. So if you installed custom heat sinks on a single-sided memory stick, for example, so this is a single-sided Samsung B Type S DDR4 memory stick. The other side has eight DDR4 memory chips, and the other side is just completely blank. So if you wanted to install like a custom heatsink to this memory stick, you would use thermal paste on top of the actual chips and then you would just use like a sheet of thermal pad on the blank side and then you could easily install the custom heatsink onto this memory stick. So that is one example. Then uh, another example would be that if you want to use like custom cooling solution on your graphics card like a GPU only water block or some uh, exotic cooling method on the GPU, you would still want to use like a very strong air cooling solution on the uh, VRMs, so on the MOSFETs. So we can use the 7970 as an example. So if I used a GPU only water block or an LM2 container on the actual GPU, uh, I, would, I would replace the standard thermal pads of this uh, stock heatsink with something better and then I would just have like a strong fan attached straight against the heatsink solution to have the best possible cooling on the VRMs as well. So that is like one uh, example. So one way of testing that what we could try is that I could check the temperatures of that 7970 graphics card with the stock thermal pad and then after uh, replacing the thermal pads with this uh, GP Ultimate Thermal Pad from Jelly Solutions. And then some, uh, uh, along with those I got some fancy accessories like a pen, a lanyard for keys, so that is just like a neck keychain, and these fancy uh, sunglasses. Now these are actually sunglasses, so they, they have actually, uh, they have actual lenses over here and then they have this fancy mesh on top of the uh, lenses. So they are quite funny and you can actually see through these uh, sunglasses. But yeah, so the point of this video is to do a retest with the GC Extreme. Let's double check that is the performance still the same as before. So I will be using the same setup as before. So Z490 Dark Kimpin from EVGA, the same 10900K. So I will be using the, the same identical CPU as before and I will just add the results with this new G6 stream with the same graph so that we can compare the thermal pastes against each other. So I will do the testing right now and after I have done the tests I will get back to you with a conclusion. Okay so the test setup has been running for uh, some time now and the rig is pretty much the same as before. The only thing that is different is the memory kit. So now I'm using the uh, Kingston HyperX Predator 4133 Cas19 sticks instead of the Galax Hall of Fame sticks, but they are the same pretty much. They don't affect the temperatures. Same motherboard, same CPU, and using the G6 stream on top of the CPU IHS over there. Galax 710 GT graphics card, and I'm running the same test. So latest version of Pro95 in small FFT mode, and when looking at the temperatures so far, the average of the core maximums is something like. 72 I think but of course it will uh, change while, uh, while I've been doing the run and CPU is the same so 5.2 gigahertz across all of the 10 cores same voltage 1.3 volts same low light calibration setting Z490 dark Kimpin BIOS is different but it doesn't matter and memory 4800 megahertz 1824 24 36 rate 2 4.8 on the cache and we're looking at the ambient room temperature, 27.2, and I'm using exactly the same probe as before. So uh, the current result at the moment is something like 44.8, 45 degrees uh, when it comes to the delta temperature. Due, when it comes to the delta temperature result between the ambient room temperature and the average of the core maximum, so it is pretty much up there with the other good with the other good thermal paste models in the same graph. So the result I had with the 10 gram size jar when I made the whole testing last time, that was close to 50 degrees. So this is already like visibly better than what that was. So uh, this is the correct result what you should be getting with the G6 Extreme. 
so I will let this run for 30 minutes then I will do the Citibench R15 tests as well and I will try to do another mount as well but really it feels stupid to do this much testing for very very minimal differences so I don't think there's actual need to do like free mounts if there is some clear difference between different thermal pastes you will note it pretty much immediately when you start a workload so yeah so looks good this far okay I think it's time for the actual results and then some kind of a conclusion about this testing overall so I did three individual mounts with the GC Extreme just like last time and on the first two mounts I used one tube of GC Extreme and on the third mount I used another tube of GC Extreme just to get a bit more variation between the actual uh, tubes because even the tubes could vary a little bit sometimes just like what we saw with the 10 gram size jar uh, of GC Extreme last time it was much worse than the very old tube of GC Extreme so I did exactly the same tests as before so three Citibench R15 runs per mount and one half an hour run in, in the latest version of Prime95 uh, per mount so I think we can open the first result graph right now so on this graph the new batch GC Extreme is the blue colored column at the end of each section in this graph but really this graph doesn't really mean that much because the average of the core maximums is always tied to the ambient room temperature where the computer is running so the warmer the temperature in the room is the warmer the average of the core maximums will be as well so I think we can move on to the real result graph which contains only the delta temperature results so on the left we have the temperature results in Citibens R15 so nine, the average of 9 runs and on the right we have the temperature results in Pran95 average of 3 runs so if, if we look at the Citibens R15 first we can note that the new batch GC Extreme scored 39.88 degrees Celsius so it was clearly better than the old GC Extreme results as expected so uh, almost, six almost 6 degrees better than the old 10 gram size jar of GC Extreme and like 0.22 degrees better than the old tube of GC Extreme although uh, last time I, I could only make one application with the small tube of GC Extreme because I didn't have more remaining but anyways so better than the old GC Extreme results and it was also able to beat the standard cryonaut but really Citibench R15 is not a very good way to test thermal paste because it's very hard to point the tiny differences between thermal paste because the test is just so quick as I don't have, as I don't have ways to measure the temperature of the actual water loop itself so I'm only following the ambient room temperature and Citibench R15 is just so quick test to run so that so the temperature of the room doesn't really change during the run so it's very common that the temperature stays the same before and after the run so uh, when looking at the Pran95 results the, G the new batch GC Extreme scored 45.3 degrees Celsius so it was 4.4 degrees better than the failure jar of GC Extreme and 0.8 degrees better than the old tube of GC Extreme so quite quite a clear difference already and it's only 0.15 degrees behind the standard cryonaut so this is the real performance you should be getting with the GC Extreme so based on this I think we can remove the old GC Extreme results from the graph and finalize or summarize the whole graph so in this graph we have the end result with each thermal based option so cryonaut extreme kpx standard cryonaut and jelly solutions gc extreme if we look at the citibench r15 graph first we can note that the difference between the best performing and the worst performing thermal paste was uh, 0.73 degrees celsius so kpx versus standard cryonaut but so they so each of these options are they are all within one degree so it's pretty much impossible to draw a clear winner between these four different thermal pastes and in Prime 95 the best performing one was KPX 44.8 and the worst performing one was GC Extreme 45.3 again the difference between the 
best performing and the worst performing thermal base was only half a degree. So we can pretty much conclude that they are the same. Cannot really make any like assumptions that what, it, what is clearly the best option out of these four options. But yeah, so that's pretty much the end. So what I can what I can conclude based on these results is that you can easily or you can safely choose any of these thermal paste options for your next build. So for example, if you are building, let's say, a Ryzen 5000 based uh, computer, as there's no deleting involved, you can safely choose any of these thermal paste options for that system because the uh, differences are just so tiny that it doesn't really make a difference. If we talk about like deleted CPUs, you can often see higher differences when the thermal pastes are compared between the actual CPU die and the IHS or between the die and the cooling, cooling solution if you are using direct die cooling, which you should be if you are really going to delete your CPU nowadays. Like 10 nanometer K, 19 nanometer K, they are soldered CPUs, so the only way to really see a difference is to use direct die cooling and I might be trying that myself later. Well, I already tried it with the 1900K, but I, I want to try it with the 1900K as well. But in those deleted scenarios, you should be always using liquid metal. It has better uh, thermal conductivity at room temperature levels, so uh, on air and water cooling, but it, but it does conduct electricity. But it doesn't really matter, it's safe to use, but it will be better. It will be much better than any of these conventional thermal pastes, so there's no point on comparing like standard thermal pastes with deleted CPU for air or water use. So it's the same. But yeah, so that's that's how it, that's how the results really look like. So the overall look of the tube itself has changed a bit, just like what we already covered at the start of this video. The only minus about this new GC Extreme packaging is the lack of the separate plastic applicator. I, I really like this myself. It's much easier to spread the thermal paste evenly on top of the CPU IHS. The uh, new tip dispenser does work, but the way I felt myself with this one uh, is that you end up putting a little bit too much thermal paste using that particular uh, tip dispenser. Uh, this one is hard plastic, so it's not soft like what we are used to uh, with the standard cryo tubes. So it's a saying. It does work and it's more about like personal preference, but I really prefer the separate plastic applicator more. But uh, I think it's not really uh, that important part of this thermal paste product anyways. The performance is really the biggest thing anyways. But yeah, so let me know what you think. I really like that Jelly Solutions actually uh, saw my video and they wanted to approach me themselves. So you can safely, especially if none of the other thermal pastes uh, are not available near to you, you can just safely use GC Extreme and expect top of the line performance when it comes to thermal pastes. So any of these thermal pastes will do, they are absolutely awesome. Thermal paste is something you don't want to save money on. If you invest, let's say, a couple of hundred euros or dollars on a custom water cooling loop, it's absolutely stupid to save money on the thermal paste. Like saving four euros on a thermal paste could cost you many degrees. And it doesn't matter if the performance, I mean, if the price percentual wise is huge between two different thermal paste options, let's say like some very cheap OEM thermal paste that costs two euros versus a very good one like GC Extreme or similar that costs like six to eight euros. The percentual difference is huge, but the real like price difference is only like four to six euros. So I'm sure you get the idea. Get the best thermal paste you can find uh, uh, and just use it. Any of these will do. But of course, if they don't bring smaller uh, tube size for the Cryonaut Extreme, it's absolutely useless to buy that because, because the price is just so huge, especially for one application. But yeah. So if you like to see this video, then give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And other than that, thanks for watching once again, and I will see you on the next one.